Guys, good times with phase diagram. Phase diagrams are really straightforward. You just got to be familiar with what's going on with the with the phase diagram. So if someone gives you an un uh, an unlabeled phase diagram, you should be familiar with all of the different things that are on this graph. Now, the most important things that you need to know are what exists here, what exists there, what exists at that location, what's this point called, and what is this point called. We'll use the other points A, C, and E to ask some different types of questions, and you'll see here in just a second. So, uh, again, it's what what is one, two, and three? What are the states of matter? Now, it's pretty straightforward because it's solid to liquid to gas, and it goes like this, right? So it, it, it is sort of left to right in order, so it shouldn't be too difficult to say solid, liquid, and gas. So that takes care of the first three questions. What, what state exists in uh, at region one? Solid. What state exists in region two? Liquid. What state exists in region three? Gas. Okay, good. What about point D? What's this called? Point D, look at what's happening at point D. You got three lines, they're all coming together. This is the triple point. Now, the triple point is the temperature and pressure at which all three phases exist simultaneously. And so uh, this is the temperature and pressure, which that's true. And we just call it the triple point. Now, the next thing is what's B called? B is an interesting place. It's called the critical point. Temperatures and pressures higher than the criti critical point it present a new phase of matter. It's called a supercritical fluid. It's not one of the three basic uh, one of the three basic matter states. And so we know that beyond those temperatures and pressures, that's what exists, supercritical fluids. And so the point at which that starts is called the critical point. Let me go back and spell that correctly because I know you guys are all laughing at me right now. Critical point. Okay, cool. All right, so now let's go look at those other things we haven't talked about yet, A, C, and E. A transition from region one to region two through point A is called what? Well, what happens there? I go from a solid to a liquid. So what do we call going from a solid to a liquid? It's melting or uh, uh, liquefaction. I think it's fine to say melting. I think that's certainly fine there. Okay, what about a transition from region three to region two at point C. What is this called? And so you see that if we're going, if, if we go the other direction, the terminology we use is different. If I were going the other direction in A, I wouldn't be melting, it would be freezing. So I'm going from a gas to a liquid. What is that called? Gas to a liquid, that's condensing. Condensation. Okay, so the next one is a transition from region one to region three at point E is what? I'm going from a solid directly to a gas. Notice I don't transition to a liquid. The word for this is sublimation. And the opposite of sublimation is deposition. But the answer to this particular question is sublimation. And so that's all you have to know uh, for this particular question, but you do have to be familiar with all the different points and you have to be able to, to know what you call all these different transitions. So condensing and vaporization, melting and freezing, sublimation and deposition. All right, that's it.